Hello, my name is Didier Tosinovic. In September 2007, Safety Users Group organized a forum in London to discuss functional safety with a number of experts. This event was reserved for the press and the intention was to highlight the issues around the emergence of the International Safety Standards IEC 61508 and IEC 61511 for the process industries and also to show how safety fits as a key factor in the development of a business case. Our special guests were Ron Bell, Andreas Fuchs, Michel Outermans, Tino van de Capel. Now, we would like to share with you some of the information and insight these experts presented to the press. We believe that as part of our mission in the diffusion and the development of an effective safety culture within the industry, you will find key points of interest and ideas to support your daily business in the future. We ask, as you view this video, think about what you and your company are currently doing or could possibly do to support the effort of driving a strong safety culture. By and large, functional safety is a, a, a newish term. If you leave here with two, with two things, that is fundamental to a critical system. Because clearly, if you don't identify, first of all, what's got to be done, no matter how well you make it, it won't be done. And if you make it so it will be done, but it's not being done reliably well, how well it should be done, what the reliability is, you're not going to achieve your risk, tolerable risk. If we want to um, achieve functional safety, and the standard covers this, we have to actually cover the management of functional safety, the technical requirements, the competence, and the functional safety assessment. In the uh, US with uh, BP Texas, like Bhopal, like Sebeso. Bonsfield, it was, uh, I think, in UK terms, I think it was the biggest explosion in Europe since the end of the, of the Second World War. All those uh, major incidents really alerted people to rethink what they have done in the past. Is it the correct approach or do they have to change? Do they have to uh, reconsider uh, their strategy, their guidelines? I think everybody talks about them and sees them as uh, state of the art. The perception what people have that it is complicated goes away as soon as they have gone through the IEC 61511 and read the part one. Standards, the IEC 61508 and the 61511 are getting pretty well perceived into the market. This is a big uh, a bulk of documents, of paperwork, and therefore it's very complicated. It's perceived to be very complicated and therefore they hesitate to read it and to adapt to it. In the beginning it was always too complex, too much material to read. There was too much extra documentation to make and as usual, you know, they were pressured of budget and of time. The other group of people um, who has adapted or who have read the standard, who understood the concept behind and are planning to adopt. They see the advantages behind it, uh, which means that they avoid by that errors, they reduce the risk, they can document that they have uh, done their due diligence and sometimes it's also possible to reduce the cost. The groups that are starting to adopt it, they could show some benefit from it. In the Bunsfield recommendations, I have never seen this in any in, uh, official report before on, on an incident, that quote that 61511 should be used and it's also indicated that it wants the industry to set up, which it has done, uh, a group to use the methodology in 61511 to come forward with um, ways in which the specification for the protection systems should be uh, specified. Mm -hmm. Those recommendations are at the heart of what we call functional safety because it's actively managed systems. Something has gone wrong, we're actually trying to detect what's gone wrong and then implement some uh, automatic system to actually prevent the hazard from taking place. There's an increasing need to justify what you've achieved. Increasingly, there's the regulator is requiring evidence that, of what you have done. We noticed a fast adoption in countries where there was already where there were already some safety regulations in place. Especially the last five years, it is growing very rapidly. European areas, Russia, yeah, so they have uh, different 
uh, or no regulations in place and they still need to adapt uh, to that standards and always when we speak to those customers we first have to give a lot of information, we have to tell them how to approach it. If you look back like 10-15 years ago, in, in the beginning the people were always talking about the black box. They had a safety PLC and therefore they thought they were safe. Without this new standard, I don't think that the local standards would have developed much further. So it really was a new push into the, into the market. Everybody talks about them and, which is kind of revolutionary, it's a risk-based standard. So it's very good that nowadays they have a target. At the end of the day, what we're looking for is a tolerable risk. And that's got to be done. Responsibility, certainly in the UK, for doing that is the person who's producing the risk. Nowadays, they try to understand the risks. And based on the level of risk, they know what to build.